Alright, today I'll be taking a look at the SwiftKey Beta uh, 1.04 for uh, Android on the Motorola Droid. And as you can see here, I have quite a few keyboards installed already. I have Swipe installed, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, the default Android keyboard, of course, and a hacked HTC keyboard that um, I I like, but it's not the best. And Swift Key. As we can see in the settings, um, there really aren't that many. You can choose to have it autocomplete and give it haptic feedback or acoustic feedback. But other than that, there's not that many settings. You can change your language, um, and it will download the language modules for you. Um, an interesting thing about it is the usage stats right here. Well, it tells me that by using SwiftKey, I've saved 1,363 keystrokes, and I've been 34% more efficient. Um, whatever. <laughs> As we can see here, this is 1.0448, and this is a limited, uh, limited version, and it expires. So now I'll show you what it's like to use. As you can see, the keys are are pretty small uh, compared to other keyboards. However, they're really easy to type on because can predict what you're about to type and what the next letter you're about to type in the word is and it makes that letter artificially large the touch sensitive area for that letter is larger so if you're if you write hi it'll go to i rather than o or u because not too many people say ho or who unless you're santa claus so it's a great keyboard. Um, it actually does, it it has that little thing that says it saves you so many keystrokes. Well, I have to report it really does. I mean, it is that great of a keyboard. It does save you keystrokes and it's easier to type on. However, there is one interesting thing in here that I've noticed um, is that this huge bar up here lists words that you might want to, you know, use. So if you're writing that H-E-L, you'll get hello or help. And there are only three options, unlike some other keyboards. You can't really scroll through them. But say if you're going to write helicopter, then, you know, once you get to H-E-L-I-C, -E then it'll list helicopter right there for you. Now, the funny thing about this word list here is that even when there's nothing in there, it still suggests words. So it suggests how you should start your sentence. And if you follow the suggestion, you end up saying, I am a beautiful person. And it'll keep on going like that forever. I am a beautiful person. So I don't know if someone in the SwiftKey um, development had a... Uh, depression problem or something, but that's kind of interesting that they put that in there. Also, you can write different sentences like, hi everyone, I know that I have a good idea to advertise your company's slogan for the next few weeks. So, if you keep on typing in here, you can just get random sentences, which are quite entertaining, I must say, and make this great keyboard um, even more fun to play with. The one thing I don't like is that this huge button down here, the bottom right, is just for the smiley face. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I use smiley faces in texts but not usually just that one. And in order to get the other ones, you have to hold down and wait for it to come up, and then you get a list of all of these. That's kind of a downside. I mean, I wish you could just hold down and then swipe over to select a different one. Um, I could show you in the HTC keyboard that I use 
that's how they work it with this. You can just slide your finger to select which smiley face you'd like to use. That makes a lot more sense to me. Um, going back to SwiftKey, the number pad is also, it could be improved. Um, rather than just listing the numbers right along here, it would have been nice if they had a much larger number pad that takes up the screen with larger buttons. However, the smaller buttons do mean they could put all these symbols in here. Um, that said, it's not too often that you'll use these symbols, and it, I think it'd be okay to make you press this button twice, say, to get to the different symbols, or hold it down to get to different symbols, or something like that. Um, let's see, everything else is great. The, the spacebar is rather small, and I found myself sometimes putting a period in the middle of a sentence, because the period button is right where the spacebar should be. And they could easily solve that by making the smiley about the same size as the backspace button. Um, and elongate, elongating the space bar. Um, that said, I, I mean, I get used to it, and it's pretty easy to use. Another thing that you'll probably already noticed, there's no voice in this keyboard. Um, even the hacked HTC keyboard has a uh, voice on here, so... Uh, as you know, the Google keyboard, of course, has a nice little button down here. You just say, okay, Google is awesome. And it's taking a while because I'm in my basement, so I'm not getting that great of a signal. Anyway, um, the other keyboard the uh, Swift key cannot do that. It has no button for that. So I'd like to see that in the future. Other than that, this is a fantastic keyboard and I highly recommend it. Um, so go Swift key and I, I hope they don't end up charging for it, but if they do, I'd be willing to pay a couple bucks for this keyboard. If only because it's pretty, pretty funny, especially if you're uh, having self-esteem problems. You can also be a beautiful place. <laughs> anyway, this was the Swift Key review on the Motorola Droid. And I'm Kev5027. Thanks for watching.